Look, the MacBook Air 13 with M4 is a pretty good deal for $999. It does only have 256 gigabytes of storage, but you do get 16 gigabytes of RAM and you also lose two GPU cores. And if you can handle that, it's a great computer. Like if you're good at keeping your information in the cloud or you plan on carrying a bunch of external drives, you could make it work without any problems. But I feel like most people looking at the MacBook Air are probably going to keep it for a very long time and are planning on upgrading to one terabyte of storage. And this pushes the price point from $999 all the way up to $1399. Sure, you get a terabyte of storage and those GPU cores come back, but that puts you in direct lineup with the MacBook Pro 14 with M3. And I feel like for the price point, the exact price point with a terabyte of storage, the MacBook Pro 14 with M3 is a much better deal because yes, the Air, it's a lighter computer. You know, it's a little bit thinner. It only weighs 2.7 pounds. So if like weight is the major concern for you, you're gonna have a lighter experience with the Air. But the MacBook Pro 14 is only 3.5 pounds. It's not a lot heavier. And with that extra weight, you get some added benefits. The first one being more ports. Both of these devices have two Thunderbolt ports, which is great, but the MacBook Pro also gives you an HDMI port and a full-size SD card slot. And if you're someone who's taken a lot of photos and working in Photoshop or plans to edit the odd video, having that SD card just built right in is way better than having to carry a dongle. Now I know aesthetics are very important to some of you and if that's the case, you're gonna have more color options with the MacBook Air. There's just a lot more to choose from. This new sky blue, for example, has a little bit of blue infused into it. Depending on how the light reflects off of it and the angle, you can see the blue in it. It's more apparent when it's beside darker objects. The MacBook Pro, on the other hand, you have two choices, space black and silver. There's just not a lot to choose from. Quite frankly, I am happy with those two colors. So to me, it's not a big deal, but more color choices with the air. When you open it up with one hand, the angles of the display both tilt back identically. There's no difference in terms of how far the display can go back on either of them. But the keyboard colors are different. The deck of the MacBook Pro is a complete black. Personally, I think this just looks cooler. This is more standard on an air. We've seen this for a very long time. This just gives it more of a aggressive look, which I personally prefer. But the other little change is the speaker lineup. You're getting four speakers on the MacBook Air compared to six on the MacBook Pro. And the sound coming out of the MacBook Pro just feels better. It sounds better than what you get with the MacBook Air. But the biggest upgrade you get with the MacBook Pro with M3 is a bigger display. It's an extra inch. Do you know what I would do for an extra inch, ladies? A lot. And having that extra screen real estate does make a difference if you're using it every single day. On top of all that, the panel on the MacBook Pro 14 is way better than the panel on the MacBook Air. This IPS panel, as good as it is, has been used in this computer for many, many years. And yes, it's fine, it's good, but it's not a great panel. And most importantly, it's only 60 Hertz. This MacBook Pro has a 120 Hertz display. It's mini LED, it gets significantly brighter. It has a better color gamut. It has better color accuracy. It's just a lot more enjoyable to use. Feasting my eyes on a MacBook Pro 14 compared to the air is like going from wearing tidy whitey underwear to boxer briefs. Your junk just feels and looks so much better. What? Now for a lot of you, the difference will come down to performance because you wanna make sure these computers last you for a very long time. Well, here's the cool thing. This M3, because it's actively cooled, is actually faster than the M4, depending on what you're doing. You have to remember, when the MacBook Air needs to cool down, it doesn't have a fan to cool it. The only way to keep it cooler is to thermal throttle. That's it, right? So if you're doing a sustained workload, like rendering a file or compiling code, it's most likely gonna be faster on the M3 because there's actually fans to cool it. But look, single core clock speeds are still faster 
on the M4. They're a big difference. So like if you're loading up a web page or doing stuff that's single core focus, it's going to be faster on the M4 MacBook Air. But to tell the difference in single core clock speed using a browser is very hard to see because they both load up web pages so fast that it's really hard for your eyes to tell. Multi-core speeds in a synthetic benchmark are also going to be faster on the MacBook Air 13 with M4. When you start putting workloads through these computers, that's when you truly see the difference. For example, Photoshop, still faster on the MacBook Air 13 with M4 because that application generally likes faster single core clock speeds. Is it a massive difference over the M3? No, you probably wouldn't notice day to day. But as soon as you start video editing or using Premiere Pro, the M3 comes out on top. Because it's actively cooled, it can keep things cooler and allow the performance to really go where it needs to go. Whereas this guy truly has the thermal throttle to keep the temperatures down. But the one area where I find the M4 does have a slight advantage is GPU performance. As you can see here in my Blender benchmark test. This also means if you play games on these Macs, you'll get a tiny bit better performance on the M4. But it's not drastic. It's not a huge difference. It's not going to change your life. But if you're playing something like World of Warcraft, which I've done on both of these computers, it runs beautifully because it is built natively for Apple Silicon. It runs great on both devices, but yes, you'll get slightly higher FPS on the MacBook Air with M4. The other advantage to the MacBook Pro 14 is battery life. You just get better battery life on the MacBook Pro 14. It's not drastically better, like don't get me wrong, the air gets me through the entire day without any issues, but I can probably squeeze out another hour on the MacBook Pro 14 compared to the air. At the end of the day, if you're pushing up to one terabyte, I feel like the Pro 14 is the way to go. You just get so much more with it. You get a better battery, you get a a uh, better sound system, you get a way better display, you get more ports. It just makes a lot more sense considering the prices have dropped. Now, obviously inventory is not going to last forever on the M3, this is only gonna be temporary, but if you're in that window and you're looking to get a terabyte of storage, I feel like the MacBook Pro 14 is the way to go. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.